What you guys got another video here for you. This is the NAS of the future. This is the 8-bay SSD from Terramaster. It's the F8 Plus. It's just been released by Terramaster and we're going to be taking a look at it in this video and how to set it up. And you'll be able to see whether it's a decent NAS if you're looking to purchase a NAS. This is exactly what you're going to get inside the box if you purchase one. You're going to get a couple of little small screws here, screwdriver, your uh, power cable, whether you're in a different country, will be a different power cable for you. And this is your power adapter here. Pretty low wattage on this one, max 72 watts, as you can see there. Uh, running at idle and running in the background is not going to use a lot of wattage on this device. We also have an Ethernet cable here. We have some heat sinks here to put onto your NVMe drives uh, once you install them. There's eight of them there because this is an 8-bay M.2 uh, NVMe SSD uh, unit. So you can see here we've got some little rubber bands here. These are to hold the heat sinks on, and that's just how they hold the heat sinks onto the actual M.2 NVMe drives here. So we have the TerraMaster here as well. Very small unit, as you can see. My hand is about the size of my hand here. Very small. We've got some documentation here as well, installation guide, and also user manual and your warranty card and stuff like that, all packed inside these little envelopes here. I'm not going to get it all out, but it's all in there and all nicely printed in different languages as well. So what we'll do is take a closer look at the TerraMaster itself here. Now TerraMaster have gone all out with this one. I think it's a really nice little unit here for people that want to get themselves an all SSD type of NAS. So this is the actual unit here. We have some branding on the side here. On the top, we have some ventilation with a power button. This is to allow airflow to run through the actual NAS itself. Also, we do have easy access to this as well, which I'll show you in a second. We've got two fans on the bottom here to keep air flowing through. And again, we do have uh, some rubber feet here. These are really soft rubber feet to help it uh, stay sturdy on the actual unit on here. I'm not sure if you can leave this on the side. I'm pretty sure you could, but I think it's meant to be kept upright. On the back end here or the back end of the unit, we do have a screw to gain access to inside. Also, we have that reset area our power input here as well. You are getting an HDMI port on here as well for display if you want to use that port. And we also have that 10 gigabit ethernet port on here. Now there is only one uh, ethernet port on this, but it is 10 gigabit ethernet port, but you're only getting one there. Also, we do have two other USB ports up the top here. Again, these are USB three ports that support 10 GPPS. And we also have that type C port up the top there as well. So you can plug in plenty of devices into the back here. So you're getting three USB ports here as well. And there is your little reset there. Now to gain access to this, you just turn this little tiny screw on the back here. Now the CPU inside here is a pretty decent CPU. We're getting an i3 N305, which is also a maximum boost up to 3.8 gigahertz. And we're also getting eight cores and eight threads on this CPU. And the GPU has 32 execution units on it as well. So let's get inside this and take a look inside here. You just push up here and it should slide straight out. And this will gain access inside here. I do like the black board on here and everything's blacked out rather than that silver color they used to use. So I do like the black better. But inside here, you're going to get eight M.2 2280 NVMe slots on here for your NVMe drives. That's a capacity of 60 four terabytes if you populated eight uh, terabyte drives in here each eight terabyte drive will calculate to 64 terabytes total which is plenty of uh, storage for people and then you've got that external storage you can add inside here as well uh, these are the bays right here they're not populated you will need to populate these yourself and there is your ram module right here again this is a 16 gigabyte ddr5 non-eec sodium uh, stick uh, but it does go up to a maximum of 32 gigabytes on here. You've got your CMOS battery under there as well. Let me just put that inside uh, the module here again. And uh, down here, you can see that is that side of the board. On the other side of the board, we do have that massive heatsink here covering the uh, CPU here. And this little USB drive is your operating system. It does come with TOS 6 on here. And again, in previous generations, people have 
uh, hack this and put their own version of operating system on here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it on this, but maybe that's something that uh, TerraMaster might be able to answer. Again, we do have four more slots on this side where you can populate with NVMe drives on here as well. Now, of course, if you are investing in something like this, you better be prepared to pay out quite a bit of money for the eight terabyte drives for these because they are quite expensive at the moment. So to populate eight terabytes times eight in here would be quite a bit of money. So bear that in mind if you're looking to buy something like this. So I've already got the heatsink on here and it's held in with these little rubber bands. And again, uh, you just need to remove the screw here and populate uh, these areas right here pretty straightforward and easy to do it's nice that they've uh, included the heat sinks here to keep the drives cool because obviously you want to keep uh, this unit running as cool as possible so you can see down here we do have two fans blowing right across the unit itself to keep it cool again with these uh, mechanical drive type NASs uh, from other manufacturers they can get a bit noisy because you've got mechanical drives in there and also you do also have uh, the fan noise which sometimes can get a bit noisy and you have to turn that fan down but then things do get a bit hot so this was quite quiet compared to those now i've populated just three drives in here for testing purposes and um, because obviously i have to pay for these myself and what we're going to do here is just slot this back into the actual unit itself and then we can just keep that screwed down with just that one screw so very easy access also, I just want to make sure that people understand that TerraMaster did send this unit out for review. All opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released. So what you see here is just my own personal opinion and experience with this unit itself. So people always ask me, what is a NAS for? Well, a NAS is for many different things, for small businesses and also home users. You can use it for file servers. You can use it for backup solutions virtualization you can use it for 4k multimedia video editing and you can even use it for home data center as well if you wanted to there's many other things you can do with a nas you can put all your home surveillance on here as well and many many other things so how much does this particular one we're reviewing right now cost it cost about 729 english pounds which is a fair bit of money but you're getting a lot of bang for your buck you're getting eight bays on there which are capable of having eight terabytes in each bay so it's a powerful eight core eight threads processor in here and it runs super quiet as you would expect with that 10 gbps is very nice as well you only get one of them which i would have liked to see two uh, ethernet ports on there but you do only get one and again it's a pretty decent unit all round so if you are looking to invest heavily into a NAS then maybe consider the TerraMaster FA SSD Plus. So let's get this unit set up basically you would have all the documentation here on the website and also in your uh, possession once you purchase this you can go to their website and put in the details that they tell you to put in and you would then navigate through this little navigation screen here and it will tell you basically to do a search for this tnas uh, dot uh, local and once you've done this it will bring up this page right here if you've plugged it all into your local network this is what you're going to see it's giving you the disk compatibility list here always check to make sure you're purchasing the right disks that work with this particular unit because it's a big investment once you click next and go through the process of setting up an account here, you can then begin. And once you've got your username and password set up, it will go through this process here. Once you've done that, it will give you a warning to say all of the data on those disks will be erased. And that means that the drives will be wiped and ready for use with your uh, TerraMaster system. So we're going to go ahead and let it partition out and do what it needs to do. And once it's done, you will get the countdown timer here and it should auto refresh. If it doesn't, you can just go back to that location here and it will bring you up the uh, EULA here, which we you can go down and agree to their terms and click confirm. And once you've done this, this is where you're going to set your account up. Uh, so you put your username in here and password. This is for your super user settings. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that right here. And uh, once we've done this, we should be able to continue on with the installation process so click next 
And from here, it's going to ask you to send a security email here. You just put your email address in and send the code. Once it's done that, you'll then gain access to your device by putting in your username and password right here. And once we've done that, we can stay connected here if we want to and logged in. So I'm going to click continue. And this is it. You're on your main screen here. You can see the icons up the very top here are ready to use and you can go through here. It's very simple and easy to navigate through here. All of the stuff you see here is customizable to your own liking. So what you need to do here is I'll go through these top ones up here. This is your start area here. And on there, you can do your search and stuff like that. This is your file manager. And again, straight away, it's recommending uh, this backup solution right here. I'm going to skip that for now. But here you've got your My Shares, your Recent, your Desktop, your Safe Box, and also your Documents and your Volume uh, as well right here. So let's go ahead and close that off and go to the next one, which is this one right here, which is all your applications. This will give you access to your file manager, your backups and your control panel, your app center and your Docker manager right here. So that is a really nice added feature here. You've got your support and help here and your security advisor. You would be going through your security advisor here to make sure your NAS is fully secure and set up the way it should be once it's finished uh, doing a few things for you. Inside your control panel, this gives you access to your user, user groups, your shared folder, and all of your other information that you're going to be needing on your NAS, which is your remote access, your uh, discovery service, and stuff like terminal and things like that. So this is where you'd gain access to all your control panel. This is just like a Windows operating system where you'd have all access to everything you need inside your control panel to control your device. So this is your applications right here. This will tell you exactly what is allowed and denied. And then you'll go through here for your app center here. This is where you can download and install all of your apps. And this will be to install. Now you don't have to, this is another confusion that people get is you can install multiple, multiple apps. You don't have to keep it for one particular thing. So you want uh, the backup solution on here, you can. And you can also put the Terra photos in here and this will all be all your photos that you can put on. And you can also use something else on here as well, like Plex. You don't just use it for one thing. It will be for multiple different things that you can use your NAS for. So if you want to share files with friends and family, or you want to gain access to it while you're out and about, you can do as well. You can even watch movies from the outside of your network if that's what you want to do. And you can confirm here, and this will then allow us to go to the community type of uh, add-ons that you can add in like your programs as well there's plenty of them here there's pages of them here I'm not going to go through all of these but these are community run and some of these are pretty good and again like I said but most people try to keep it simple and uh, if you don't know what a NAS is then maybe do some research on it you should have a NAS in 2024 I think because it's very useful uh, to have now docker is very useful as well if you don't understand what that is i'm not going to go into that too much in this video i have made some videos on it although a lot of people did not watch it and i think that's because it's probably above what they know or what they want to use on their computers so i'll probably won't be making much more of the network inside of stuff so let's go through here this is report an issue here you can report issues and that's pretty much it that is the terramaster f8 ssd plus it's their new release. I'll leave all the links and information in the video description if you're interested in something like this. If you want to see more on this particular product, then let me know in the comments section below what you want to see me do with it, and I'll be happy to make those videos for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.